Hi, I'm Jonathan Long, and thank you for joining us at the Russian Church of Christ for our midweek Bible study. Uh, we're going to be looking at today is discipleship. We've been studying this in our midweek studies, how to be better disciples, how to be more fruitful disciples, how to best serve out that command that Jesus left in Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20, to go and to make disciples. And today I, I want for you to just think with us for just a moment uh, about what it means to build deeper relationships. You know, throughout God's church, we are called to have relationship with people. You know, one of the most important things that, that we do as a church is we observe communion, and, and that word means to have fellowship together, to have a depth of relationship. It's one of the most intimate parts of our worship service, and it's all about the relationship that we share with each other through the relationship that we share with Jesus Christ. And so I want for us to, to think about what it means, how we might have deeper relationships, the relationships that God called us to. And, and you know, one of the most important questions you could ask that's going to steer the relationships that you build and the foundation that you build those relationships on is found in Matthew chapter 16. Jesus asked his disciples, uh, who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, well, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. They kind of put that off. He says, who do you say that I am? And they start telling him who everybody else says that he is. And then he says, but who do you say that I am? And that's one of the most important questions that we can think about is, who is Jesus to you? Who is he? When you think about Jesus... What is the answer that you come up with? Who is he? Is he the savior of the world? Is he a good teacher? Uh, is he just a, a rabbi or just a prophet, as some might say? That question is going to steer how we build our relationships and, and, and with a foundation that we build them on. Is he your savior? Or is he just a savior? You distance yourself from him a little bit. And when we look at the pattern of, of, of who Jesus is, if he really is a, a personal person to you. He is the person that not only died for the world, but that died for you personally. His pattern becomes a lot more to follow whenever you have relationship with him. And what I want for us to do is, is look at three aspects of relationships that we should have if we're to model Christ. You know, um, Mike Breen in his Life Shapes has this triangle. It's the relational triangle. It's got a, the top point is up, then you have out and you have in. And those are the three types of relationships that we should have with people. We should have a relationship up with God, in within the church, and out to the world that's around us. And he makes the point that there are so many people that uh, are weak in one of those areas. There's so many churches that are weak in one of those areas. And they end up not being able to be stable sources or, 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 or to be mark the stability of the depth of relationship in each one of those areas and it makes them less effective and so as we think about that idea of having depth in each one of those relationships i'd just like to to give you a couple of things uh, to think about first is we see jesus modeling this idea in, in matthew i'm sorry in luke chapter 6 jesus calls his disciples but before he does that in verse 12 says that it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. The very first thing we see Jesus doing is he is spending time alone, building the up part of his relationship with God. He spent time alone, dedicated and set aside with God. You know, there are, uh, there's a thing that we can do as Christians. We can trick ourselves into thinking we're building a relationship with God when really, uh, especially in leadership positions, we're just studying God's Word just so that we can know more, so that we can have a Bible lesson to teach. We may only study God's Word so that we can have an answer when we go out to evangelize. We need to learn to include God in every aspect of our life, to really walk with God, as it says in Malachi chapter 6, to, to walk humbly with our God, to include Him in every aspect of our life, to spend time with Him so that He is our joy, not just so that He can provide us with an answer, but that He can... We can partake in, in the joy that is being in relationship with God. We look up to the Father. We spend time drawing closer to the person that is God. 
And then it says in verse 13 that when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. Jesus spent some time within those that were closest to him, within the, the group that was closest to him. This would reflect to us the relationships that we build within the church. And one of the things that we've got to do if we're going to be like the church that existed in the first century is we need to build relationships that that are genuine, that, that are, are substantive. You know, there's we build cheap relationships sometimes in our churches if we're not careful where we just see each other, one another, and we just exchange some pleasantries, but we don't know anything that's actually going on in one another's lives. We're not committed to to bearing the burdens of one another or to sharing our burdens with one another. We're not confessing sin to one another like we should, and, and we're not working and laboring together. That is how you build real depth of relationship within the church. And then it says in verse 17, after he called them, it says in verse 17, And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases. And so we see Jesus modeling for us that we should have relationship to those that are out in the world and that are broken. Excuse me. Jesus models this for us that we are to have relationship up with God. We are to have relationship within the church, within those that are closest to us. And we are to use and work out of the depth of those relationships to affect the world that is outside of us. And when we we look at the world that we're dealing in, we start talking about uh, uh, doing our outreach. We've got to become really, really comfortable with reaching out to the people uh, that we or that God would have us to. Uh, an example was given that you know sometimes Christians uh, fish for men like they are using an artificial or they they're going to throw out one bait targeting ve- one very specific type of person, and if they don't bite, well, well then that's just it. We're not going to try for other fish, but. The pattern that is left in a parable by Jesus is, is men casting a net. And they pull in all kinds of fish and debris. And then you sort through it. That's the type of fishing that we need to do for people in our out relationship. We don't need to limit ourselves and who we reach out to. We don't need to allow be allowing ourselves to be limited to only well-dressed people who are rare, who are already exposed to spiritual things and already have a, a Bible knowledge, but we need to be prepared to get down in the trenches, to get down in the nets, to wade in the water with our nets, to capture even the dirtiest and the nastiest that we would consider of this world. You know who that really is? What we would call dirty and nasty are really just those that are broken and without Christ. That's what we were before we had Christ with us. We need to be willing to participate in that model to bring those types of people to God. You know, as we think about these relationships, our world is dying for real, genuine relationship and real connection. And what we've actually devolved into because of our, our great technology and, and the social social media that's presented itself and really, I think it started before that. You have sitcoms where we as families would sit together in front of a TV, sit near one another, but not engage one another, but think we were doing something together. Social media has exacerbated that problem to where we like and share and we look at one another's posts. We look at what people are presenting as themselves and we exchange that. We pretend that that's having real relationship with people. Having real relationship with people means seeing them face to face, talking with them face to face, engaging in their life, bearing their burdens, sharing our sins with them as we hear them, helping one another become more like Christ as we are drawing as close to having a real relationship with Him as we can. That's what it means to have deep relationships. I hope that this has been insightful to you. I hope that you'll take the challenge to draw deeper to the Father that is above, to to invite deeper those that are within the body around you to have depth of relationship with them, but then to use both of those to go out to evangelize, to teach people what it really means to be a disciple of Christ. 
thank you so much for, for joining with us. I, I hope this was useful to you. I hope that you would put it to use. And, and if you're in our area, we would love for you to come and to worship with us. Uh, if we can help you in any way, if you've got any questions or comments, we would love for you to ask those in the comment section below. We'd love to engage you in that way. Like, share, subscribe if you've enjoyed it. Until next time, we'll see you then.